on to California gets you down. If you're in the country living and partial to the sky, then come on down to Texas and see what God has done. Welcome to It Happened in Grand Prairie, our sequence number six of the historical highlights of the past of Grand Prairie. And thanks for the memory, we're going to have another one of our old timers in Grand Prairie to talk with today. We're just so pleased to have Mrs. Otis Williams, Francis Peed Williams, who has been in Grand Prairie for many long years. Francis, welcome to It's Happened in Grand Prairie. We're glad to have you Thank with you, us. Thank you, Rosie. Wonderful. Now, Francis, we know that both you and Otis were active here in Grand Prairie, but we're going to concentrate on you today and let you tell us a little bit about when you came to Grand Prairie, the specific dates, the full names of your parents if, and your mother's maiden name, because this is going to be a historical document for us. So would you just relax and, and tell us a little bit about your genealogy? Would you do that, okay. Francis? Uh, my mother was Sarah Virginia Stubbs, and my foster father, who was my uncle, John L. Stubbs, came to Grand Prairie. Uncle John came in 1898 from Mississippi. They were born in a little town in northern Mississippi called Cotton Plant. Mm -hmm. Their mother and daddy died within a year of each other when mother was about three years old. And the boys and the two girls were just kind of loaned out, I guess you'd say, to people. I know uh, a couple raised mothers, she called them Aunt Liza and Uncle Sam, mm -hmm. but they weren't relatives. Mm -hmm. Uncle John came to Grand Prairie first. What in, year did he come? In 1898. 1898. And went to work for Dr. J.E. Payne, the second oldest doctor in Grand Prairie, mm -hmm. who had a drugstore and did his uh, doctoring from that drugstore. Where was that located in Grand Prairie, Dr. Payne's drugstore, when your Uncle John came here? Uh, what is the name of the savings bank now on the on the corner? Yes, the that, that's where it was. Used to a, be Citizens uh -huh, Saving, uh -huh. and it is now it was independent an old white, American. White frame building All is right. where it was, mm -hmm. with a water trough right out in the middle. There, mm -hmm. we had one little street right through Grand Prairie, going from Dallas to Fort Worth, mm -hmm. and Uncle John and Dr. Payne put up the first telephone lines in Grand Prairie. Dr. Payne had a brother, Bob, that lived in Webb, Texas. Mm -hmm. That's out southwest of Grand Prairie. Hop, skipping a jump from here now, but yes, at that time it was quite a distance. Quite a buggy ride, wasn't it? Yes, and okay. Uncle, uh, Dr. Payne wanted to put up a telephone line so he and Dr. Bob could converse backwards and forth. So Uncle John strung that wire from here to Webb Mm. for the first telephone line. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in, is either 1902 or three, mother came to Grand Prairie to live. She also had another brother here at that time, Mr. R.B. Dick Stubbs. Mm -hmm. And she came to live with her two brothers. Mm -hmm. At the, that time, and I have a little article here that was cut out of the Grand Prairie Texan many years ago uh, was found in, uh, well, I can't remember what her name was, Miss Tom Bacon yes. was working at the City Hall in Dallas in the records building, and she found this old paper. Mm -hmm. And it was about uh, the first newspaper that was ever in Grand Prairie called the Grand Prairie Hustler. Mm -hmm. Dr. Payne was the president, my Uncle John Stubbs was the secretary, and my daddy, Wiley Parks Peed was the editor. Well now tell me how old was your mother when she came here to 18. join? 18. She join was 18. Program. And then she and daddy married. Where did they meet? 
uh, here in Grand Prairie somewhere, now I really, I don't know that, but it was bound to be, see, he was working with Uncle John in the newspaper I business. See. So they married in 1904, mm -hmm. and he went to work for the Dallas News then. As he was an editorial writer, mainly. Mm -hmm. And then my daddy died in 1912, mm -hmm. and Uncle John, brought mother and we three little girls. I was 15 months old. My sister Ruth was three. Sister was six, Zelma, Zelma Swadley. Mm -hmm. And Uncle John was more, much more than an uncle to me. Mm -hmm. He was my daddy. He, I, I just worshiped him. I was under his foot all the time. Funny thing, the first thing that I can remember about Uncle John Shall I just hold it up yeah, to that? Yeah, you hold that up right here? Was this little car. He used to come home to lunch, and he'd take me riding in that little car. We'd go out to the cemetery and back. That was our daily ride. You know about what year this was, Francis? And if you were three years old and you were born in what year? I was born in 10, 1910. 1910. So I was about three or four years old when, mm -hmm. the, when this was. Mm -hmm. 1913. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Then, uh, <clears throat> I don't know where to go from there. Well, you know, we, you know where to go. We have these three little girls living yes. with your mother. Uh -huh. uh, and your mother uh, evidently was very important in the community and did a lot of community service. Tell us a little bit about your mother's activity. Well, uh, the first thing, of course, I can remember is any time the First Methodist Church door opened, mm -hmm. mother and we three little girls were there. Good. She was very active in, it was called the Missionary Society then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when, I'm sure, we put sister in school, mother worked in what was the Mother's Club mm -hmm. then. Yes. I can remember then when I came along that she was still working in the Mother's Club. Then later on, she was in the Garden Club. She was a member of the Eastern Star. But mother's main love through those years was, you know, didn't, women didn't go to hospitals to have their babies mm -hmm. at that time. Yes. And mother would go with Dr. Payne or Dr. Copeland and help them deliver the baby. She was a midwife. Mid, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Or a practical nurse, they called them then. Wonderful. And she would stay with the mother the first two weeks, keep the mother in bed and take care of she and the baby. Mm -hmm. Then she'd let the mother get up and she'd stay two more weeks with her to get she and the baby started. Quite a difference now and then. It certainly is. And then uh, my first fond memories too of growing up right downtown Grand Prairie, Uncle yeah. John went to work later on for Hancock Drugstore. Oh yes. And that was, I just loved to go down there, especially when he'd uh, tell me that they were going to have an empty ice cream carton that afternoon. Mm -hmm. You know, they came in great big cartons at that time. Right, five gallon. On the end of Urban, oh, I, I must go back and sell this. When my daddy died in 1912, they brought him from Dallas to Grand Prairie on the train. Mm -hmm. And then there was a flat, I think they called them flatbed wagon mm -hmm. there at the depot. And they put the casket on that. Mm -hmm. A horse-drawn carriage took him to the cemetery on that. Mm -hmm. And Daddy was about the fifth person buried in Southland. We call it the old Southland Cemetery. Now, where do I go? I got myself all mixed up. But, but that's fine. Okay. You're, you're just at the right place. Uh, your fond memories of Grand Prairie. Now, after you're growing up and starting into school, do you remember maybe some of the teachers or do you have any old class pictures? Oh, yes. I have several of, several of those. All right. What year did you begin in Grand Prairie in the schools? Or what year did you graduate? What class? I graduated in the class of 28. In the class of 19, uh -huh. you remember how many were in your class? 25, 25 I believe. 25 in the class of mm -hmm. 28, and can you remember some of your classmates that oh, yes. are still in, living? In fact, a few of them still do. I have, uh, I don't know which grade pictures, but I have two. All right, this is That was when we were just little fellas. 
This is when you were, say, in elementary? Uh-huh. And it was that old 11th grade school that's located that's right. there on uh, College Street uh -huh. now? Okay. Now, I have a picture of that, too, but I'm sure that you've seen those in interviewing other people. That one school we had. Exactly. Well, would you like to show the picture yes, that you have here? Yes, now this is the fifth grade. Now, that's the fifth grade out in front of that school. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your teacher in the fifth grade? She's here, Miss Harmon. Miss Harmon, uh -huh. that's a new name to Now, her. this is Bertie, Mrs., her name now is, oh, goodness, I've forgotten it. She was Bertie Harston there. She uh -huh. was a Grand Prairie native, too. Uh -huh. And she, Jack Grantham, her name is Grantham now, and I believe that she still lives in Dallas. Mm -hmm. That was even before this, you can tell that, but I don't yes. know what, what grade that was. I forgot Probably to mark Probably second it. or third uh -huh. grade. And I think I have my senior picture here somewhere. From, from the class of 1928? Uh-huh. Wonderful. We'd like to see that one. And do you remember who the superintendent was or some of oh, your yes. favorite high school teachers? Or well, whatever? I have a picture of him now. It, 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 Right here, Mr. Hudspeth. Mr. We Hudspeth. went all through school with him. Oh, you did? He was superintendent for years and years. And this is my sister Ruth's senior picture. Uh -huh. And this was a Miss Hart. I had mm -hmm. her too. She was science and biology teacher and algebra. You think she and, was maybe one of your favorites? Oh, yes, definitely. I never shall forget the night that I graduated. Miss Hart met me before I went inside and handed me a little package and told me to keep it with all her love that she had made it for me. Mm -hmm. I get kind of sentimental. That's all right. We like to get sentimental. <laughs> and it was a little hand embroidered gown How she had her. made me she for graduation. That yeah. was lovely. And we you? stayed friends. I used to see Miss Hart. She lived in Dallas, and after mm -hmm. she retired, she was, even, she was in uh, the Altrusa Club and BMPW Club in Dallas with my older sister, Zelma, mm -hmm. until she got so old that All she right, had now, to... After you graduated from Grand Prairie High School, the 11th grade in the class of 1928, tell me a little bit uh, about what happened to you right after those graduating years. What did you start doing, and then how did you meet Otis? Those two things I want you to tell me about. Okay, well, I went to what was NTAC then, it's now uh, UTA, UTA. Uh -huh. and I didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to work, mm -hmm. awfully bad. Being the third child, about all we had growing up was all the love mm -hmm. that anybody would want. Mm -hmm. I had never had a new coat. It was always number three. Hand me down. And sometimes number four from a cousin that mm -hmm. gave to sister. So I didn't want to go to school. I wanted to go to work, buy myself a coat. Mm -hmm. But Mother and Uncle John insisted. They wanted me to go to SMU, and I definitely wasn't going to go there. So I said, well, I'll go to Arlington then. So I went over there. How did you get to Arlington? On the interurban. Right. There was an interurban that ran from Dallas to Fort Worth. Where was the station here in Grand Prairie? Uh, where Watts parking lot is right next to Jefferson. Mm -hmm. All of that along there was the, there was a brick uh, building on the corner that had a grocery store, the Berry's grocery store, right. and above it was uh, the lodge hall. Mm -hmm. And then next to that was the interurban station. You got your and tickets there. Got right? the tickets there. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they had what they call book tickets, you know, that we could buy more than one. Now, we know where you got on the interurban there on Jefferson. But where did you live? In what close proximity did you live from Center Street or the First Methodist Church? Where did you and your mother uh, live? Well, your now home? at that time, uh, by the time I got ready to go to college, we lived at the corner of Dallas and Second, mm -hmm. right across the street from Dr. Copeland. I see. We were neighbors of the Copelands for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So that was where I lived when I was going to college. All right. But I begged them to let me start taking typing at midterm mm -hmm. and just did well in that where nothing else I did mm -hmm. trying to be a smart aleck and show them where so after that first year Uncle John conceded and let me go to Metropolitan Business College in Dallas mm -hmm. for a six-month secretarial training course mm -hmm. 
My first job, and it was during the Depression, I was very lucky to get this $25 a week job as secretary to the head cashier at what was A. Harris uh -huh. at that time. Uh -huh. It finally merged, it was Sanger Harris, and yes. still is. But at that time, it was A. Harris, and it was downtown Dallas. And then... How did you get to downtown Dallas to work? I rode the interurban part of the time, and then we would try to have rides. Mm -hmm. Carpool. Uh-huh, carpool, that we did a good bit. But right. if we didn't, while we rode the interurban into Dallas and got off at the Baker Hotel and then walked from there to my job. Mm -hmm. And then I worked at Dreyfus and Son. Mm -hmm. It's what is Wolf Brothers now. And I even, my sister worked there, and that was, she helped get me a job there. And she had started working under the original, Mr. G. Dreyfus. Mm -hmm. And by the time I started to work there, Mr. Saul Dreyfus was the main man then. But Mr. G. still sat in a great big chair up on the balcony where he could look all down below, and when we came in, we'd always wave to Mr. G sitting up there. Did you ever think about uh, coming to work in Grand Prairie, Texas? There wasn't any place to work here then, Ruthie. We, we had to go to Dallas to How work. How many people a, lived in Grand Prairie? Around 1,500 as, while I was growing up. While you were uh -huh. growing up around We knew everybody. Years. Oh, it was a wonderful place. <laughs> All right, now tell me about Otis. Well, while I was working at Dreyfus, my sister Ruth went to a party one night and met a young man, and he asked her for a date. And he said, well, uh, I, I, and I can't come unless you can get my room made a date because he has a car and I don't. Mm -hmm. So Ruth got him a date with me. Okay. Well, I knew the first date I had with him, I said, this is it because I wasn't a youngster. I was about 24 or then. And we went together for two years. Otis worked for the American Laundry Company in uh, Dallas. He had come from Van Alstine. I see. He, out, right out of high school. Uh, and what was Otis's full name? Clifford Otis Williams. Wonderful, go right ahead yeah. now with your story. And he had gone right out of high school into professional baseball playing. Mm -hmm and went as far, which I think so much about, I wish Otis now knew that Montreal was in the major leagues because mm -hmm. that was who he played his uh, pro ball with was Montreal. Mm -hmm. What did, uh, place did he play in baseball? Position. Third base. He was third base, uh -huh. okay, go right ahead then and tell us more about Otis. And so anyway, that first date, I, I was pretty smitten and I think Otis was too. Mm -hmm. He had a, a Chrysler coupe then that had the rumble seat. Mm -hmm. Well, now he and I sat in the rumble seat and Ruth and Jimmy sat in the front seat. Mm -hmm. So we went together for two years. He was trying to get ahead a little bit before we married, but, and we married at the First Methodist Church here. And who was uh, the minister? Uh, well, I'll have to go back a little bit on that, which meant an awful lot to us. When Otis was playing high school baseball, they had a young minister come to their church named Harrison Baker. Mm -hmm. It was his first uh, church. Mm -hmm. Well, Van Alstine was so small that they didn't have any uh, athletic coaches. Mm -hmm. So Brother Baker coached Otis in football and baseball and basketball. So when we got ready to get married, I wanted church wedding and Otis didn't. Finally, he said, well, I'll tell you what, if you'll let me pick the minister, you can have any kind of wedding you want. And it was Brother Baker who married us, who I absolutely worshiped, was one of the most wonderful men I've ever known. Wonderful. We married October the 21st of 1936 and went to San Antonio on our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. We lived in Dallas for a little over a year and me wanting to come back to Grand Prairie all the time. I, I didn't exactly. like this business not even knowing your next door neighbor. Right. So we came back to Grand Prairie. In what year? Uh, must have been about 25? 38, no. No, we married in 36. Oh, 36, uh -huh. all right. And I guess we came back here about 1938. All right. And uh, where did you move to in 1938 in Grand Prairie? You remember where you and Otis? Yes, in a, a 
an apartment that belonged to the Heights mm -hmm. on North Center Street. I see. It was a big two. It was originally their home place. The old Irving Height home. No, the Irving's daddy. I see. The uh, well, you were at the uh, meeting we had yes. when Bob Hyde yes. was, well, now this Bob was Hyde Bob's, Hyde. Bob was a little boy, uh -huh. and they, that was their home place. I see. And uh, we, they made that into four apartments, mm -hmm. and then they built the house next to them there for their new residence. Mm -hmm. So, uh, then my brother-in-law, my sister Zelma's husband, uh, got in very bad health. And give and his name. Ray Swadley. Ray Swadley. Another old time family here right. in Grand Prairie. They had grown up together, had been friends for years and, and then fell in love. Mm -hmm. And they married in 34, All right. two years before Otis and I did. And when Ray became so ill and mother, I mean sister, had to still keep working, sometime he was able to work and sometime he wasn't. Mm -hmm. Well, when he got so bad, Otis and I moved out here and lived with them. And I could look after Ray in the daytime with, along with the help of mother, mm -hmm. and sister could keep on working. And then uh, in 1940, we built our first little house. It was a garage apartment over mm -hmm. a three garage house a garage for us to get the size house we wanted. Mm -hmm. Just an awful cute little place for and two. And where was this? That was on Dallas Street. All right. Just about two doors up from the Copeland mm -hmm. residence. Mm -hmm. And then Mother and Uncle John both got in such bad health that when, well, at first say, about my son, we uh, adopted our son when he was a day old. Mm -hmm. In 1946. Would you give us that darling's name? John David Williams. John David Williams. And when my, he was about two years old when Mother and Uncle John got in such bad health that it was even hard for me to go across the street and take care of him. So we built a, a room on to our old home place. And Otis and John David and I moved into there to take care of Mother and Uncle John. And then do you want me to go on now with Uncle John? I mean, with, with John David, or? I think that would just be wonderful. Tell us a little well, bit about Well, he went John all David. through school here. He first went to Bowie, and then we built a home in Keith Heights, and he changed to Austin Elementary. Went to Lee Junior High and Grand Prairie High School. And from the time he could remember, music was his life. When he was five years old, he started, we started him with Ms. Flynn mm -hmm. in piano. I never shall forget the first recital I heard him in was in Ms. Flynn's home, and he played a duet with Ms. Flynn, and all you could see of his feet was just the very top of them, right hanging over the piano bench. That's how small he was. And Mrs. Flynn was the one of the music teachers here in Grand Prairie during those times. Yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Aunt Mother got in such bad shape that I just had to quit letting John David take because I couldn't, I was having to practice with him because he couldn't even read. Mm -hmm. So he didn't take anymore until we moved into Keith Heights and he was in Austin Elementary then. And by that time, Miss Terrell, who was his idol, she had been our music director in our church when he was just a little bitty boy, and she tells it that she can remember if she ever turned around, John David was standing up in the seat directing the choir with her. All right, now tell me when you lost your mother. I lost mother in 1954. 1954. And Uncle John in 53. They passed away within 10 months of each other. And? Uh, subsequently, as John David went through school and, and uh, studied his music, then finally you have become involved as president of the city council of PTAs. You had uh, gone through all of the chairs and most of the PTAs at Austin and at Lee and at high school and, and et cetera. Uh, were you a member of any clubs or anything? Oh yeah, uh, 20th Century Study Club, the Rajabian Book Club, the Federated Women's Club, 
So you were busy as a community leader, just yes. following in the footsteps of your mother. Yes. And then. But I love my school work and my PTA work better than any of it. All right. Now I must ask you this: When did uh, Otis go to work for the city of Grand Prairie? Uh, Ruth and I can't remember the year. Oh, yeah, he he retired in '69, and he had been with them 17 years I see. in charge of the. Uh, warehouse that had to do with the water department. Mm -hmm. He uh, had all the new water meters that the men would come in and get from him with all the things you know that it needed to, to set a new water meter mm -hmm. and then uh, they pulled the old meters out and Otis repaired them all right, in his work. Tell me when you lost Otis Williams. In January the 25th of 1975. All right, now, after you lost Otis and you lived down on Blackburn Street in Keith Heights, and that's still your home, uh, tell me what happened to John David. He goes away to college and, uh, and studies, and, and tell us what happens to John David a little bit further. Well, down. his first job, when he, Mr. Chambers was our superintendent then of schools, mm -hmm. And when he came to Mr. Chambers to see if he could come back here to do his student teaching. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Chambers told him yes, that he would be happy for him to. And at that time, he asked John David when he would be, get his degree. And John David told him in the spring of 68. He said, well, would you be interested in coming back here as a music teacher, choral music teacher? Well, of course, John Day was just thrilled to death to, that to Mr. Chain, yes. So he taught two years in Adam at Adams Junior High School. Where is John? Choral David? music. Where is John David now? He's in Arlington. All right. What has he been. Do? He has two junior highs. Workman Junior High and Gunn Junior High is the choral director there, and then he, as he calls it, is moonlighting, which he said he kind of felt to start with like his daddy would somebody paying him to play golf. All right, he home. was made the assistant music director of that 4,000 member Methodist church, which he dearly loves and still doing. You must tell us about Carolyn and the baby because we have about one more minute and you must hold this up and let the camera get a shot okay. of this box of memorabilia from your past that is one of the most unique I've ever seen. Now, why do you tell us about Carolyn and your grandbaby? Well, John David and Carolyn, she, her name was Buckley. Her daddy had a man shop here in Grand Prairie for many years. They married in uh, July of 1969. And then they went to Plainview for six years. John David taught music there in the schools, different areas, elementary some and junior high some. Then he came back to Arlington to work in a man shop and he knew that school teaching was still for him, so he went into the Arlington school system at that time. And they wanted family awfully bad. And they got our little Caroline from our Methodist mission home in 1980. I'm just 70 years older than my one and only grandbaby, but she's been a joy. She started to kindergarten there. Carolyn is very active in the Methodist Church. In fact, she's there just like my mother was. She, she even teaches the preschool and teaches a Sunday school class. They're all three so involved in church, which makes me so happy. In fact, Christmas Eve, I was able to hear my son play Christmas carols for an hour at the candlelight communion service. Francis Williams. It has been a delight to have you talk with us today and helping us to say thanks for the memories. Ruthie, might I just add one other thing? All right. In the next few months, we're going to have another baby. We're going to have one. We're adopting some more, aren't we? Francis, thank you very much for being a wonderful part of the past of Grand Prairie. And we hope that everything will go as well for you in the future as it has in the past and you get that very special other grandchild that you want. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we do and live.